really proud of our kids. Um, I think they, they put a lot into our strength and conditioning program. I, I think um, we needed our older kids to lead. I think they, there's no question that they did that. We needed some new kids, to, new players to step forward. I, I think that happened both on the mound and positionally. And uh, so I think it was a very, very productive fall. And uh, we started a little bit later than we normally did. And I, I really liked the way that worked because we got a lot more individual work done going into the official part of the fall and, and ended up getting into some cooler weather, which I like because that's how we're going to start our season out. We're going to play in some cooler weather as well. So um, productive. Our fall World Series very competitive. Um, all the little things you want to have happen during the fall happen. So um, pretty pleased with it. How are you basically going to great to help the team now, some of the guys that weren't able to just take the ball? Um, Paul Young is somebody that, that has had some uh, reoccurring aggra aggravations with his arm, and uh, he, he's really frustrated. I know he wants to get out there, but I think resting him this fall is probably the best thing that we could have done, and uh, he, he, he steps into our program with, with uh, you know, a great background of arm strength and you know, helping his team to a national championship in, in junior college. So uh, I, I know he was frustrated by not pitching as much as he wanted to. Um, obviously Woodruff um, came back slowly from from his rehab. Uh, very deliberate, but I, I think his, his last three outings in the fall were just phenomenal. Uh, so it was very much worth the wait. Um, you know, a couple of Injuries here and there, uh, nothing major. Of course, Ross Mitchell is just now starting to, to throw live off the mound from his uh, hip surgery. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel really fortunate that uh, that we're, we're in a pretty good place in terms of our health. I think after game one, if I remember correctly, you weren't too happy with the effort, performance, all that drop balls, errors. Did you see the improvement that you, that you kind of asked for after that game? Well, you know, you have to segment those things. When, you know, it's like... You know, 95% of the things are positive, and if, if one poor thing ha happens on the, on the mound or behind the plate, it's, it's really uh, magnified. So I, I think we had a bunch of, of catchers learning a bunch of new pitchers and vice versa, so we had a few more drops than we wanted to. Um, and, and I think we, we really had to learn how to communicate with each other. So anybody who came to our well, under squad is pretty probably frustrated with the pace of the game because there's so much interaction between pitcher, catcher, first baseman, corner infielders. These are all kind of getting to know a new pitching and catching staff. So, um, but I, I, I really like the direction it went and uh, and how it evolved during the course of the fall. Um, did you did you have a guy kind of take catcher by by storm, or, or, or is that still kind of an open position as you go into the spring? You know. I really, it's amazing because all four of those guys just have something tremendous to offer. You know, Garner had the best offensive ball uh, to me out of the four of them. Uh, he just, man, he, he just had tremendous at-bats and uh, showed power, showed patience, used the whole field. Um, and then you look at Cody Walker, there's no deniability, denying the fact that he has incredible arm strength and um, he had a nice ball. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, offense, he swung the bat really well. Um, you know, we really liked the, the freshman uh, Collins. He did not have a great numerical statistical fall. Really soft hand, really good blocker um, for sure. And, and Randolph really kind of, cons you know, from a consistency standpoint, um, he knew our pitchers best when he was here a year ago. I think he showed a lot of maturity, a lot of leadership. Um, he probably managed the game um, the best out of that group of guys as well. So all those guys kind of brought something to the table. But I, I think January and February is really going to help us because those guys have learned our staff. Now when we come back, who, who's going to step forward? Really in about 10 inter-squad games and about a month worth of, worth of uh, work, who's going to step forward and, and win that job? And I don't think it's going to be one guy. I think it's going to be at least two, maybe three guys. In that first month, you know, we have so many games sandwiched together. I think our first three series are four game sets. So, uh, you know, you, you're going to be able to think, find out a lot on the mound, but, but we're going to find out a lot behind the play as well. When's the last time maybe you carried more than two on your own? On your yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's difficult. You usually don't carry two, um, but I, I think, you know, like with Garner, just as an example, um, 
he's one of our best hitters. So, you know, he, he fills a, a void there, you know, automatically. I, I mean, he, he has the capability of being a very, very good middle of the order type SEC hitter. Wes talked about this freshman class attacking the weight room. Did you see him attack the same way on the field, you guys? I, I did, and, and I think that uh, it's it's so difficult because for the freshman to step in and, and for us to, you know, Coach Neal does such a great job in strength and conditioning. We, we spend six weeks really pushing, pushing, pushing strength and conditioning, and, and usually the high school or junior college transfer has not been through something like that. So their, their body goes into a little bit of a shock, just getting used to, to that level of, of performance in the weight room and in conditioning. So I think this group might have been a little bit more prepared than years in the, in the past. And, uh, and I, I think that this group's strong and very athletic. Were you able to identify any of the uh, pitcher roles that maybe will come up in the spring? I know probably some roles will be set when spring comes, but any you have a role that you like some guys in this fall? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things is we're really going to start with Langren in the bullpen. Uh, we, we feel like he has a chance to be a Chad Girado type guy, uh, a guy who can fill in in several roles. You know, when, when you look at a guy like Lingo, you, you, you ask yourself this question, as a starter, is he going to be more of a guy who's going to pace himself? I, I tell you, when you, when you tell Langren, hey, we need you to get these three guys out, you know, this ball was 93, 94 miles an hour with an 85 to 87 mile hour slider. <coughs> there was no pacing himself. It was just attack. And the level of stuff is as good as I've ever seen in college baseball. I mean, the, the issue is commanding the baseball, and that's something that he works on every single day. So when those two things come together, you know, I, I think he's he is special, but he becomes even more special. Um, but that's just one example. We, we really try and tailor our ball after what we envisioned the spring looking like. So we're not going to, you know, years past, I think in some, during the fall, I said, okay, everybody's going to get three innings, and it doesn't matter if you're relievers. Really you know, we were bringing guys in left on left, right on right, and trying to establish roles right from the get-go. So um, we, we feel like we we got a lot of that uh, worked out as well. How does Lingo feel about that role? I mean, you're talking about a drafted high school kid that's probably part of I think he's in love with it. I think he envisions himself pitching in the big leagues out of the bullpen. You know, I think he sees that. I, I, uh, I think we see that. I, I think, you know, there are a lot of guys in the big leagues making a lot of money doing that. And I think he sees himself doing that. I, I think he's a, more of a sprinter than a marathon guy. Um, not to say that three years from now he might be a starting guy, you know, in, in double-A, triple-A, and in the big leagues, whatever. But uh, he's got a great arm. and. Just, you know, whenever we make a decision, what we're trying to do is find out what's best for the individual and best for the team. Those are equal. The, both of those considerations are equal in our minds, and uh, I think he's in agreement. You know, this, we don't ever make a decision like that until we're, we, we meet with the young man and bring him in and say, how do you feel about it? I think he's totally on board with that. You talked about catcher, but did you get any, clo any closer on the middle infield? Who's going to play short and second? Yeah, I think, I think all those guys are going to play early. Uh, I really do. I think the first three, four weeks, I think all those guys are going to get opportunities. You know, certainly uh, Seth Heck is the new guy in that rotation that, that's, that I thought had a great fall, junior college uh, transfer uh, from Washington. We're really impressed with his level of maturity. Um, just a grinder, just a guy who just, you know, keep, keeps on producing. Uh, I think I had to say from a positional player who the – made the biggest jump just for the fall alone, and things can change in the spring, but you know, maybe Matthew Britt would fall into that role. Uh, he made a big jump. He was a guy who, you know, the door was open at shortstop, and, and I, I think he has done everything he can do to, to try and win that job. I think the bat came alive this, this fall, um, and certainly there's never been a doubt about his arm strength, his athleticism. Um, he's going to get a lot of opportunities early at shortstop along with Seth Peck. He, he will be involved in that. and. Uh, you know, Pirtle had a great fall. He has been a great leader for us. Uh, I think Han is, is uh, Kyle Han is somebody who's gotten a lot better. So we have four guys. You know, a lot of programs have, you know, they have eight, ten guys trying to get those two spots. I kind of like the fact that we have four. I think all of them are going to contribute. And I think they're, they're all very good players. A lot was made last year how you handled that bunch of players and the personalities. How are you handling it this year being 
uh, kind of the expectations and being the hunted rather than the hunter? I, I think um, I think our kids have a great attitude. You know, in, in our sport, and I've mentioned this before, we really believe in it. You're really not attacking opponent, an opponent. You're, you're really attacking the game, and our kids know that. The more you play this game, the older the kids get, the more they realize the game at any point in time can punch you right in the mouth. And, you know, you have to learn how to deal